Hey guys, so this is your vocabulary for the astronomy unit. Now, if this is the first time you see it, be sure you see it in Ed Puzzle first and answer the question at the end. Don't worry if you miss the question, you get full credit for watching the video. I just need evidence that you watched it. If this is the second time you're watching the video, please feel free to do it on YouTube, okay? All right, let's get started on our vocabulary words. The first vocabulary word is axis. Now, you can use this word for a lot of different things. But in this case, we are going to be using axis as the axis that runs through the planet Earth. It is a line that we have. And some of you might have seen it on a globe. And when I'm doing the lecture video, you'll see me holding a globe and talking about it. Okay, the axis is a line that goes from the North Pole to the South Pole on the Earth. This axis does not move. Okay, all right, next word. Cyclic patterns. Now, cyclic patterns are things that repeat themselves, right? Things that go around and around. We have fall, and then we have winter, and then we have spring, and we have summer. It's a cyclic pattern. It goes in a circle. A clock goes in a circle. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. We go all the way through, and then we come back to 12 o'clock again. The phenomena that we're talking about, and we'll be talking about in the astronomy unit, is seasons and also the phases of the moon. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the phases of the moon. So a cyclic pattern is a phenomenon or a process that goes around in a circle and repeats itself in the same order over and over again. Next word. An eclipse. An eclipse is when in some way something is blocking something else from being seen. Now, somebody's personality can be so fabulous that they eclipse another person's personality. Or we can talk about celestial bodies, which is how we're going to use it here. We're talking about things in space how the moon can block the sun, and how the sun can block the moon, okay? All right, we're gonna learn about different types of eclipses. We're gonna learn about a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse, all right? So this is when one thing gets in the way of something else and it blocks being able to see it. Next word, a lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse is when the full moon passes into the shadow of the earth, which means the moon disappears, or it can look super red, okay? Now, what happens is, is that here is the sun, and here is the earth, and the moon goes into the area next to the earth where the moon disappears. Because we know that the light from the moon is a reflection of the sun, right? Wherever the sun hits the moon, that's when we see it lit up. The moon doesn't make its own light. And when the moon is in the shadow of the earth, then we can't see it. Now the reason it looks red is pretty cool. It has to do with light. Light is one of the only waves that we can see, right? And we have all the different colors that we see. Red is the longest wave, and it actually goes around and can bounce. And we'll talk more about that later in the year. But right now, so you know, when the moon is in the shadow of the earth, sometimes it looks red. Okay? And you want to remember this order. Sun, earth, moon. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the lunar phases. The lunar phases are the different ways that we can see the moon from the earth. Now what we're looking at is the reflection of the sunlight on the moon. And as the earth and the moon move in our orbits, as we go around each other, we, the sunlight hits the moon in different places and it makes this moon appear in different phases. That's all it is. It's just about where the sunlight is hitting the moon and how the earth is compared to where the moon is so what we can see as the light reflects. I think you know what the moon is. 
The moon is a celestial body that revolves around the planet. So Earth has one moon, but Jupiter has like 70 something at this point. And different planets have different number of moons. Okay, we, learned, we had a question at the end of the last unit about why the planets closest to the sun don't have moons. And that's because of the gravitational pull of the sun. But as we get farther out in our solar system from the sun, planets have a tendency of having more moons for different reasons. Next word is orbit. Now an orbit is a curved fat path, okay, of something that goes around something else. For example, the moon orbits the planet Earth. As a planet, we orbit the sun. And all the different planets in our solar system orbit our sun, right? But there are other things in our solar system that orbit our sun. But our moon orbits our Earth, just like the moons of Jupiter orbit Jupiter, okay? So there's a difference between revolution and orbit. Orbit is things that go around something else. Revolution is you turning on your own, along your axis. Oh, another vocabulary. Okay, the next word is seasons. Seasons are a division of the natural year into different types of climates, right? A different amount of sunlight during the day, a different amount of um, warmth, and that effect of sunlight changes everything. It changes the moisture that's available. It changes um, the temperature, okay? Now, a lot of people think it has to do with how far away the Earth is from the sun. But that is not the case. You see, a season is about how the planet is tilted on its axis. So when the Earth is going around the sun and the top of the planet, the northern hemisphere where we live, is tilted towards the sun, that's summer. But when it's the opposite in the orbit around the sun and the southern hemisphere where Australia is, is tilted towards the sun, that is the summer. And that's the winter in the northern hemisphere. That's why when it's Christmas time in South America, Australia, and the, and, and the tip of Africa, it is warm and hot. It is their hot season. Ah, I bet you didn't know that one. All right, next word. This is a solar eclipse. So now we don't have the sun, the earth, and the moon. Now we have the sun, the moon, and the earth. And this is when the moon passes in front of the earth in such a specific way as to cause an eclipse of the sun on a certain part of earth. Now we know that the moon is a million times smaller than the sun. And because of that, the moon can only block the sun in a small space on planet earth. And that's why a few years back, when we had a solar eclipse, about four years ago, I'd say, you could only go to certain places to see the solar eclipse on planet Earth. That's because the moon can only block the sun in a certain area. Now, this doesn't happen very often. The moon, the Earth, and the sun have to be lined up in a very specific, perfect way for this to happen. The next word is a solar system. Now a solar system is a star like our sun and other things that go around it that are attracted by its gravitational pull and they orbit that star. And that's what makes a solar system. So there are solar systems all over our galaxy, all over all the different galaxies in our universe. Okay, we just don't know if there's one with a planet quite like ours out there. Next word is star. Now a star is a sun. And there are all different kinds of stars. There are giant mega stars that are red and tiny little ones that are white. They range in size. They range in sizes that are extreme. They can be super 
where they make our sun look tiny. And they can be so itty bitty that they are the size of a planet in our solar system. They also are different colors because they produce different amounts of heat. And what that means is that they're made up of different chemicals and they have different amounts of matter in them that make them. But also some stars change as they get older into different kinds of stars and they renew. They become nebulas and then they become stars again. And this is how time goes on. That's how we know our solar system has a medium-sized star with a medium-sized heat. It's a yellow star, and we know that it's about halfway through its life. The average yellow star lives about 8 billion years, and ours is 4.5 billion years old, and it has about 4, 4.5 billion years to go. So I don't think you and I are going to live that long, but that's what makes something a star. A sun is a star. It is a luminous star around which planets resolve. This means a sun is made up mostly of hydrogen and helium. All right. Now, I talked a little bit about this earlier, the tilt, the slant of Earth. Now, Earth ranges between 23.5 degrees around the sun. So here's the sun. And instead of the Earth just going around straight, it actually tilts to an angle, far north and south pole. And this tilting shifts depending on the seasons of the year. So when it's tilting so that we are away from the sun, the top of the planet is bad. That means it's our winter. And when it's tilting forward towards the sun, that means it's our summer. Okay? So the tilt is about 23 and a half degrees. We know that 360 degrees makes a circle. 23.5 degrees is about a quarter of a 90 degree angle. And that's what our Earth sits on most of the time. It does fluctuate and it switches as it goes around the sun. Okay. The next vocabulary word is the Big Bang Theory. And you've all seen the show, but here is Big Bang Theory. And the Big Bang Theory is how our universe was formed. And the estimation is that our universe is 13.7 billion years old, and it exploded out of a dense mass, and it is currently still growing. And the idea is, is that our universe came to being when this explosion happened. We have no idea what existed before, during, or after, before this, okay? But at that point, it was the spark that began our universe. The next vocabulary word is galaxy, if I can get on it. Galaxy is a large group of stars clustering together in space. And we are in a galaxy called the Milky Way, and our Milky Way is a very specific type of galaxy, and it has these little spinning arms on it, and we're out in one of those arms. So galaxies are clustered together throughout the universe, and between the galaxies, there is very little stuff, and it can be considered open blank space. So when you watch shows about voids and stuff like that in space, they're talking about the spaces between galaxies. Because stars and minerals and gases tend to cluster together in galaxies in our universe. The next vocabulary word is asteroids. Now, asteroids are large or small metallic massed things, rocks, right? We think of asteroids as rocks. And they're made up of different materials, but it's made up of the materials that our planets were made on. Think of it like the leftovers after our planets were formed that are floating around and orbiting the sun, orbiting the sun, and they go around and around. They're also the things that hit Earth, you know, and like cause mass extinctions. But there aren't a lot of them that are still going around in our solar system that would hit us. Unless they're coming from outside our solar system, those might cause a problem for us 
like in Armageddon or something like that, some crazy movies. But most asteroids that are in our solar system are orbiting the sun and they're made up of very similar materials as to our rocky planets. Our next word is charged object. Now, our vocabulary words are gonna change a little bit now because this is the end of the unit. We're gonna start talking about space. But in space, things have electrical charges, right? We've all had a shock. Charged objects are things that have extra electrons, okay? Electrons are the part that we, hopefully we learned about last year. They are part of the composition of an atom with a proton and a neutron and an electron, sound familiar? And so when something has extra electrons, it is considered charged and you can get a shock or like the scan lady with her balloons, it can make your hair go. A current is a flow, a directional flow of electrical charges. And this is also how you use electricity. So electricity is moved into your phone, your cell phone, using a current. It is how energy is moved from one place to another. These are used through electrons. It is a directional flow of a charge. <coughs> a current is a directional flow of a charge through any kind of object or medium. It is how you charge your phone telephone when you plug it in. It is how you carry a battery. It is through a current. An electric force is something that attracts or repulses between two charged objects. So some things can have a positive charge on them, like this wall. And if you rub a balloon, it can get a negative charge, and they are attracted to each other. But if they both have a positive charge or both have a negative charge, they will repel each other. And so an electric force is the attraction between two charged objects, two things that are charged. An electromagnetic force is a force that has an electric component and a magnetic component. So we've talked about electric forces, energy, and we talked about magnetic forces, like a magnet, the positive and negative sides, also the magnetic force of the Earth. But an electromagnetic force has both of these things that work together to move currents and charges from one place to another. Okay? All right. That's the end of the vocabulary. Be sure you write it in your own words. Be sure you do the application part where you have the picture, the related word, or the sentence. It's very important to have these things. You need to have them all to get full credit on your vocabulary. These are easy points, ladies and gentlemen. If you need any help with it, let me know, and I will talk to you all later. Have a good day.